So for the first one, who thinks it's linear? So that one is a trick question because we haven't, we didn't have one like that. Can we please check out our earbuds too? Our AirPods and headsets. I, I really appreciate that. It just means the world to me that you all respect me enough to listen to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. We didn't talk about this. So this is a, a trick question, but this here, this is actually an exponent. The, a square root is an exponent. So this one is actually nonlinear. And it's because when you take the square root of x, that's the same thing as x to the power of 1 half. So that's why the first one is a no. All right, raise your hand if you would say number two is linear. Who thinks the second one is linear? Who says it's nonlinear? I agree because of that x squared. Yep, would you put NL? That's fine. All right, y equals 2. Who would say linear? I would agree because we don't have any exponents. That is a linear equation. It's actually a horizontal, horizontal line. All right, what about the fourth one? Who would say that's linear? What about nonlinear? Yep, I would agree. Good job, it's linear. And last one, y equals 4x cubed minus 5. Nonlinear. So on the test, I think about four points. And it's like a 31-point test or something like that. But a big part of it is just telling me, looking at an equation, if it's linear or not. So it's pretty straightforward. So again, it's linear. I'm just going to rewrite that definition. Variables have no exponents or have exponents, no exponents higher than one, I should say. And that's all that's to it when you're looking at an equation. As long as you don't have an exponent higher than one, it's linear. And the square root does count as an exponent. It's an exponent that's a fraction. So go ahead and take out your notes, your modulate notes. Finish up 8.2 today, I think. I think. All right. So, again, a linear simply means that it's a straight line. Is this graph a straight line? No. So if all the points don't fall on a straight line, it is nonlinear. So the equation for this function is going to have something happening to a variable to cause it not to be a straight line. So if it's not a straight line, it's not a linear function. So, what's the page number, guys? Uh, five.
All right. No problem. All right, what about graph B? What would you say, linear or not linear? Linear, because it's all on one line, it is a straight line, and it is linear. All right, and then the last component of 8.2 is intercepts. And an intercept is where it crosses through the axes. So a couple things to um, highlight or underline is, is the x-intercept is the point where it crosses the x-axis and the y-intercept is the point where it crosses the y-axis. So we're going to do our best to estimate our intercepts looking at this graph. Some of the graphs are a little icier to look at. It's not as clear. But for this first one, it's only one intercept. Let me zoom in. This is the only intercept right here. And what do we call that point? The origin. The origin, good. And what's the numbers? Zero, zero. So it intersects at zero, zero. So the x-intercept is zero. And it also intersects the y-intercept at zero, zero. So the y-intercept is zero. Whenever it crosses through the origin, that means it has an x-intercept at zero and it has a y-intercept at zero. All right, so let's look at this graph. So the x-intercept, this graph crosses through the x-axis here, here, and here. There's three places where it crosses through the x-axis. So that means it has three x-intercepts. The first x-intercept is at negative three, zero, negative one, zero, and two, zero. So your x-intercepts are negative 3, negative 1, and positive 2. So you can have more than one x-intercept. Oops, sorry, I didn't, I, I let that one off. Okay, so the y-intercept, this is your y-intercept. We have to do our best to kind of, let me zoom in really closely. So it looks like this is counting by fours. So this would be zero, this is four, this is eight. So what do you think this is going to be about? If we're counting by fours, this would be 12. So we're just doing our best to estimate it. So it looks like our y-intercept is at 12. So your y-intercept is at 0, 12. And whenever you're writing your y-intercept, the first number is 0, and the second number is your actual intercept. All right. Now let's go to this next one. I want you to try to estimate the intercepts for the next two by yourself. Yes, Daniel. Oh, I'm sorry. I put it back up there. All right. So take a minute to look at this next graph and estimate what you would say for your X and Y intercept. I'm going to pass out homework two today. And part of homework two is estimating intercepts. So this graph has one x-intercept and one y-intercept. So see if you can figure out where those are located.
This is our last question. So what did you say for your x-intercept? The x-intercept? So it looks like if we're counting backwards, this would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Who said negative 5? Raise your hand if you got negative 5. All right. So you could say negative 5, 0, or you could also just put negative 5. And then your y-intercept, where does it look like our y-intercept is located? Zero, comma, two. Good job. All right. And our last function has a lot of x-intercepts. So we got one here, two, three, four, five. There's five different x-intercepts. So... I usually start from the furthest to the left. So this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So negative 4, negative 2. So negative 4, negative 2, 0. And then what, what would you say for this point right here? 3. And then the last one was where? Five. five, good job. Who had that is their five points? Now there's only one y-intercept because this is your y-axis. This graph crosses the y-axis only one time and that's right here. So zero, zero. All right, so homework two, I'm getting ready to pass that out. And that covers 8.2 and 8.3. So I will announce the due date. It's not going to be tomorrow. It's not going to be Monday. I'm going to pass it out now so you can get the front side finished during class and just put it in your binder for when I check it. If you did not get a stamp, though, for homework one, then that's what you should be working on now so you can still get your points before the end of class.